Hello, it's Teresa. Welcome to my channel. I'm so glad you're here. Today is day six and the last day in my Christmas in July for 2023 series. Now remember, this series is a giveaway and you'll be able to enter through August 5th and the drawing will be on August 6th. The winner will be able to select any one project that I have featured in my series as their prize. All of the contest rules and details are below, so be sure to read that. But basically, all you need to do is be a subscriber to my channel, like this video, and comment below. Let's get into today's project. Today, I've made two home decor pieces to share with you. Now these are both on 8x10 canvases, and these canvases are very inexpensive. Um, I bought them in a value pack at Michael's, and I'll list them below, but you can buy them pretty much anywhere. Um, I will pick them up and show you the details one by one. Now to save time, because I will be doing a tutorial at the end of this video, I'm not going to show you the items that I used individually, but I will link them in the description box below and give you a general description of the items that I used. Again, this is just an 8x10 stretched canvas that I have painted with some antique white paint, just acrylic paint, and glued down a couple of pieces of paper. Now I will share the paper collection with you. The paper collection that I've used is from the Paper Studio, and it's called Old World Winter. And all of the papers that I've used in these projects came from this paper pad. So anyway, we've got some paper, we've got some stencil paste, we've got some iridescent glitter, got this cute little wooden nutcracker that I bought in like a huge pack and just blinged them up and put some stickles on them to decorate them a little bit. These are called Foiled Fancies, and I get them at Paper Wishes. Um, these roses are from Prima. And we've got some little buttons. Uh, these are just from my stash. If I can remember where I got them from, I'll share that with you. And just some random bling from my stash, some little pearls, and everything is just glued on. Now in the center, we have this beautiful 3D topper from Hardy Crafts, and I'll show you the package that this came from when we get to our tutorial. But this 3D topper was my inspiration uh, for this whole thing. This particular design was inspired by uh, Paper Wishes. I used to be part of their multimedia subscription that they had many years ago. And um, one of the projects that we did was similar to this in that it was on a canvas and then we opened up the paper to make a frame. Um, but the rest I've just kind of done my own thing with. So um, thank you Paper Wishes for the inspiration. But this was so much fun to make. Um, I just can't wait to make one with you. So I'm just gonna lift it up so you can see all of the details. It's very lightweight, so it's easily going to hang on your wall, or it can be propped up on a stand. And in, like a plate stand would work perfectly for this if you just wanted to have it um, on a desktop. But I think it is so beautiful. And since I did a really fun feminine version, I like to think, like I've said before, that I'm not a one-trick pony. And so I wanted to make a more masculine version um, just for fun. So I will show you that one now. So this topper piece came from the same pack of uh, Hardy Craft 3D toppers. And, but it just has a completely different look and matched up with these different, you know, more masculine style um, papers. And then I also used some dies from my stash. I will try to link them below. Some of them are from Amazon. I think I probably used three or four different random die sets to come up with this foliage and the pine cones. Um, this was just a, a poinsettia from my stash. I believe I got this at Hobby Lobby. These were some buttons from my stash and I thought that they went really nice. I like the, uh, the gold with the uh, wood look. And 
the glitter that I used is like a cocoa color and I thought that that really went nicely uh, to bring out the the brown and the pine cones. Um, I also used stickles to decorate my pine cones and foliage, added a little, little bit of bling because, you know, after all, it's me. Um, but yeah, I thought this one turned out really fun as well. So now that you've seen what I've already made, let's get right into the tutorial. The first thing that I did was used this folk art matte vintage white to put a base coat on my canvas. I just used this little foam brush, put the base coat on, it only took one coat, and let that dry completely, which didn't take long at all. You wanna paint the edges too, but you don't have to paint the back. Once your canvas is painted and dry, we're gonna set it aside and start on the next step. As I mentioned, my inspiration for this project were these 3D toppers from Hardy Crafts. And these are all in ornament uh, shapes. And they don't look like much on the package, but when you open them up, I'll just flip through some of them for you. They're much more impressive. They're quite large in size. And what you have are three different pieces where you would put foam tape on the backs of the two smaller pieces and you would layer them on top of each other like a decoupage. And these are some of the ones that were in this set. Just super cute. And the one that I chose for our project today is this sweet little angel. So what you want to do is figure out what your focal image is going to be and then choose two coordinating background papers. Now remember, we are going to make an opening on the top sheet, roll it back to reveal the bottom background paper. So make sure that you have these um, situated the way that you want so that the opening is actually going to be the bottom paper. So for your bottom layer, what you want to do is tear it down to seven and a half inches wide by nine and a half inches tall. Now, I find it helpful to cut it an inch bigger. So I cut mine to eight and a half by ten and a half. And then I marked a half an inch all the way around. And I'm going to use that as a tear guide. Now this doesn't have to be perfect, and if you just want to eyeball it, that is completely fine. But for me, <laughs> I'm a little bit of a perfectionist, and um, I'm just more comfortable with a guide. So I'm going to go ahead and tear this out. And when I'm tearing, I am pulling toward me, and that way the white edge will be on the back instead of on the front. You'll just have a torn edge. And that's what we want for this project. And I am going to, I don't want my edge to be straight. So as much as I'm using that pencil mark as a guide, it's a rough guide. And I am purposely making sure that it's, my tear is not just a straight line. I'm gonna go all the way around doing the same thing just trying to keep it roughly, you know, around the size that I'm going for by using that line as a guide. So when I turn it over, this is what my piece looks like. I'm gonna set that aside for a minute and I'm gonna do the exact same thing to my second piece. Now for this piece, we want to tear it down to six and a half wide by eight and a half tall. So I've cut this at seven and a half by nine and a half and I've given myself this 
uh, pencil margin to use as my tear guide. So to emphasize that rough edge, I like to go over it with some Vintage Photo Distress Oxide ink. So I'm going to pull that in and I'm going to ink around all of my edges. And you can put as much or as little ink as you would like or skip this step if you don't care for that look. I just like the contrast that it gives between the papers. Next, we're gonna bring our canvas back in. Make sure that it's nice and dry. And we're gonna take our largest sheet and we're gonna glue that down to the canvas. I like to use my Beacon 3-in-1 for this step. I like that because it doesn't wrinkle the paper. Now, I am not gonna go all the way to the edge. I am going to make sure that my edge is free because I want it to look kind of rough and kind of three-dimensional. So I'm just going around like this. And then just kind of center that on your canvas, making sure your orientation is right. Next, we're gonna bring in this sheet. And what we're going to do is make a tear that is five inches this way and five inches this way. Now, you can do the same thing that I did uh, with, the, with the pencil guide if you want to, or you could just kind of fold it, not crease it, you just, just to get your center point. I think I'm going to mark it. <laughs> So all I have to do is figure out where my center is and make a line that is five inches across. So the first thing you need to do is find the center of your paper. So just measure down. It should be about eight and a half. So four and a quarter would be where you put your dot. And this way should be about six and a half. So three and a quarter. And so my center is right here. And I know I need to be five inches, so I'm just gonna put it on the, my center point right at the two and a half inch mark. And I'm gonna draw a line down to the five. And then I'm gonna rotate my paper and I'm gonna find that mark again. Again, I'm gonna put the two and a half inch uh, mark on my ruler there and draw a line to five. So now we have this X. I know it's faint, but in person, especially depending on your background paper, um, you'll be able to see it. Again, we're just using this as a rough guide. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my paper and I am going to fold it in half. I can see, but I'm not folding, I'm not creasing it. I'm just folding it down here. And then I'm going to see where my center is, which is right there. And I'm gonna kind of pinch it just at the center. And I'm going to tear 
along that pencil line. And it doesn't have to be straight, just has to be as best as you can do. And I'm gonna tear down to the end of that pencil line. Now again, we haven't creased this. I'm gonna open it back up. Next, I'm gonna turn it and I'm gonna fold it the opposite way. And again, we've got that pencil line as our guide and we're gonna do the same thing. Just tearing down from the center to the end of our pencil line. There we go. So for this step, I'm actually gonna use my art glitter glue. And what we wanna do is we want to put just the corners of this down because this part we're gonna roll back. So we don't want to adhere that down. And you might want to just kind of train this a little bit and get it ready for rolling. Okay, check your orientation, flip it over. And again, we're just gonna glue this outer portion. I am not going to glue all the way to the edge, because again, I want that to have kind of a free look. But you can see where your tears are. Just avoid any areas where that paper might roll back. And then flip it over, center it. I kind of hover above to make sure that I've got it about where I want it before I place it. And stick it down. For this next step, you might want to use hot glue. That is what I'm going to use. Um, it just makes it a lot quicker for what we're going to do, but you can also use um, you can also use your art glitter glue for this step. You just might have to hold it for a few seconds. So now we're going to roll this paper back, and I like to use I like the barrel on this jewel picker. Um, I like the diameter of it. I think it gives a nice size roll. You can use whatever you'd like, or you don't have to use anything at all if you can just do it yourself and not uh, and be confident with that. Um, I'm just gonna turn this a little bit like that, and I'm just going to give it a practice roll. Just kind of get the paper trained a little bit to where I want it. So it kind of looks like that. And once I kind of know where it's going to be, I'm gonna put a little bit of hot glue right here. I don't wanna get it too close to my, uh, to my jewel picker because I don't want it to get glued to my jewel picker. So I'm just gonna hold that for a second. And then I'm gonna slip this out and I've got my roll. I'm just gonna repeat that on the other three sides. Next, we're gonna take some of the uh, vintage white paint. I'm just gonna squirt just a little bit on my craft mat. And I'm gonna take my foam brush and just get a very small amount. And I'm just gonna go over the white parts that we just folded back, making sure not to get any paint on the paper, um, at, you know, where we opened it up on this bottom layer of paper. Just gonna go right on the tops of those rolls and close to the paper, but not all the way down. And repeat that on all four of the rolls.
Next, I'm going to grab a lace stencil. Now, this one is from Hot Off the Press. I don't think it's available anymore, but any doily type stencil will work perfectly. And if I can find something similar, um, I'll link it below. And so basically all we're going to do is take this. I'm gonna start at the top because that's the first one I painted and my paint might still be wet. But we're going to just place the stencil down, butting it up to the paper roll that we made and kind of, you know, trying to even out our corner here. And I'm using this stencil paste, uh, this Nouveau Glimmer. It's called uh, Glitterati Gold. And I just opened it up. I've never used it before, but I thought it would be a pretty... Um, color for what we're doing. It's nice and glittery. So got my palette knife here. I'm just going to scoop directly from the jar and start layering it on. And you want to go all the way to the edges of your canvas. Make sure your stencil does not move while you're doing this. And once you have a good coat on there, you want to carefully lift it up and remove it. Now, if you have some hanging over the edge like I do, simply take your palette knife and scrape right along. And that cleans it right up. Now we're gonna do this on all four corners and you're gonna to wanna to clean off your stencil in between applications. So I'm going to go and wash mine quickly under the sink, pat it dry, and finish up the other three corners. And then I'll be back. Now an extra step that you can do while your before your stencil paste dries is to add a little bit of extra fine glitter. Now this is from Recollections and it's called Glitz and I'm going to sprinkle just a little bit on top of my wet um, stencil paste. I like to take the lid off and take just a little pinch and just kind of hit it in a few areas just for a little something extra.
Once you've finished this step, we're going to set this aside and allow it to dry. I've used a die from Anna Griffin to cut out this frame circle. And I've also cut a circle out of some white glitter cardstock that I'm going to put on top. So I'm just going to glue that directly to it. I always use my art glitter glue when I'm gluing onto foil because the three in one can actually take the gold finish off. I'm just going to place that in the center. Hold it down for a second. Now I'm going to assemble my 3D topper. And I've already put foam tape on the back of each of the pieces. Now you only have to do the top two pieces for the layering, but I wanted there to be some a uh, little bit more dimension, so I put foam tape on the back of this to bring it off of this uh, frame background that I'm going to put it on. So we lay down our largest piece, take all the foam backing off of the second largest piece, And we just line it up with the image. And then we're going to take the smallest piece Take the foam backing off. And we're gonna line this one up as well. I try to go for the edges of the leaves. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I think that looks pretty good, pretty cute. And then I'm simply going to adhere this to the base that I created. I'm going to add just a little bit of our glitter glue just to make sure because it's glitter cardstock that we're putting it on. Just want to make sure that we've got it adhered well. And I'm just going to center that on my base. Now these already have glitter applied to them. And so really, uh, these are just good to go. I think these are so much fun, I love them. Next, I'm gonna take a little bit of this gold eyelash trim. I'm just gonna cut a piece off and I'm going to stick it through the hole in the top of this ornament. Okay. And I'm just gonna tie a little bow. leave my tails kind of long and decide later if I want to trim them down once I get it placed. Sorry, my camera turned off so I don't know exactly where I left off, but I just put my centerpiece in and I was just playing with the bow a little bit to see if I could figure out if I want to keep those tails or if I want to trim them. And... Yeah, I think I want to trim them. So, I'm going to start here. Let's see what I think of that. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. So now I've got some other decorative pieces that I've prepared. 
I have these gold foil fancies that I got from uh, Paper Wishes. Now what I did is I took this file and I just went over the top to um, sand off some of that gold. And there's a, like a silver finish underneath. So I'm gonna do that with this piece now. Just wanted to show you the difference. Now I have some flowers that I made with a, a poinsettia die and stamp and mold from Heartfelt Creations. Love this set, I'll link it below. And I've trimmed it out with some stickles. I think it's really pretty. And I think it might look nice over here in this corner. Maybe, I don't know. Something. Like that and I was thinking these wings would look pretty down here in this corner and I've got a smaller one of the poinsettias and I was thinking of putting it right there so let me see if I can move these a little bit Maybe like that. I think that looks pretty. And then I kind of like something more in here. Let me take a look at what I've got. Just thinking about maybe putting these next to the poinsettia. Something like that. I'll cut that down a little bit. Kind of nesting in there. That leaf is sort of in the way. Cut that one down too. Oopsie. That whole thing fell apart. <laughs> so I don't know. I'll turn this like this and then maybe have that coming out. Something like that. And then maybe put some of these leaves. Got this little coil. Stick it maybe in there like that. Okay, I like that placement, so I'm gonna go ahead and stick these things down and then we'll continue.
next I'm going to bring in a little bling. I thought these pieces looked nice. So let me take these out. These are from Fun Stamper's Journey called Sparkle Drops. And I think I'm just going to randomly place them. Okay, and I also want to add some of, I think these. I think I'd like some more color on here, maybe more of the pink. And I think that this color looks about right. So I'm just gonna start placing these oh, anywhere where I think it might be fun. And that is it. We have completed our home decor piece. I think it turned out really sweet and I just love them all. They're so quick and easy to make and very inexpensive. So I hope that you give this a try. I will link all the products that I can find uh, that I've used in the description box below. And I just think that they are so pretty. Let's line them all up together and take a look and see. So there's our project for day six. I hope that you've enjoyed this series. I've had so much fun bringing it to you. And I am just really um, grateful for the response that I've received to it. So thank you all um, for watching my videos and participating in the giveaway. Um, remember, the giveaway runs through August 5th. So if you haven't seen all of the different uh, day's videos yet, you still have time to watch and enter. I'm going to be taking a little break from filming just to get caught up with other things. And, uh, but I'll be back soon with another fun video that hopefully inspires you to create. Until then, bye.